Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of my deck guides here. For today we'll be going over a Northern Realms list that I've put together and it's going to be around the Inspired Zeal leader ability. What this does is it allows us to boost an allied Northern Realms unit by two and give it zeal. We have three charges of this. The stratagem that we're going to be using is Crystal Skull and with Crystal Skull I mean we've got a few different kind of order units we could use it on um, to boost up give extra protection to in particular we do also have Raphard's Vengeance that could be a consideration to use it on that although we will be looking to use our one of our leader charges on Raphard's Vengeance already making it a taller unit but say if it was to get damaged down you could do Crystal Skull onto it give it extra protection it's really up to you how you want to play it um, we've got a number of different units as I said that we could use it on so we do have a number of interesting cards that we have in this deck to go with. One of them is Varaxis, the other is Foltest, and Siege, of course, the Scenario card. So we've got a few different strong plays, and it makes this deck quite flexible, and we can, you know, play throughout different parts of matches pretty flexibly and consistently. So before I go ahead and get into the strategy too much, I'd like to take you all through this list bottom up and help explain how best to play each card and when to play it. So we'll begin with the bronze units down at the bottom of this list. What I'd like to say is that we are a devotion deck, so keep that in mind with the cards you're seeing here. So because we're devotion, we get to boost an allied unit by four with this, which gives this card some pretty good value. So we do have two Karak Marines, and the idea is that basically with all of these soldier units that you see down here except for the Dun Banner, we'll be looking to play those in the first round with Raphard's Vengeance. Obviously using those soldiers to contribute to Raphard's Vengeance crew ability and at the same time they're good targets for Vengeance to thin out cards from our hand as we play that to get you know that good thinning value from that unit. So Karak Marines, hold them in your hand for the first round. Moving on to the Radovid's Royal Guards that we have here. Um, you might want to consider stacking our units in the range row to work with the formation of this. It's up to you, whatever you decide is best. Although once again, just like the Kerak uh, Marines that we just looked over, the Royal Guards, you also want to keep them in your hand first round to synergize with Vengeance, more crew ability effect. So we also have two of those. Then we have the Dunbanny units. Consider the Dun Banner kind of a package play in this deck. And by package play, I mean we're looking to play Dun Banner behind Defender and alongside Foltest. So keep in mind, we want to keep one of these copies for that time specifically to be used with Foltest. You're not using this in any other time because Foltest is going to be boosting and spawning a copy of this into our deck and then thinning it out because of this card's ability how it works so this could lead for some excellent pressure on our opponent uh, with the done banner unit i'd suggest keeping one in your hand whenever you find it just to make it consistent when we want to go for that king fall test play now we have some ballistas in here um, you know siege engines to fit with the scenario card that we're using on deploy you damage an enemy unit by one Order is damage an enemy unit by two. I mean, you could use Vengeance to thin these out, but keep in mind, you, you probably want to save these for second or third round when you're playing a scenario card. Then we have the Winch. I really like Winch with Raphard's Vengeance. Not only does it boost, but then we get to thin a card out initially when we're in within the right cooldown range. So we get to boost an ally dude by five and reduce its cooldown by three. So with the winches, I mean, you could go ahead and just use them all on Raphard's Vengeance, but they play pretty consistent in other circumstances too. When we're playing our scenario out, you could use it on Battering Ram, um, the one that's spawned from Siege, or the one that we have in deck. Also, because it's a war Warfare card, it will trigger the Reinforced Ballista's Resupply tag, so it's going to reduce the cooldown by one, okay? Then we have Bombardment here. It's just for a bit of control in this deck. Split four damage randomly between all enemy units. Increase the damage by one for each siege engine you control. So this could play for some epic value when you've got your siege card down, you've got all your siege engines out, and then you just go ahead and save it for that time. Increase value and damage. Reinforced ballistas 
fantastic card to play into our scenario card. I suggest playing them on the range tree, just get to boost them by one. And yeah, it's just a really nice way to, to open up into that because as we're playing warfare cards, especially the one that's triggered from the scenario card, you know, that's going to reduce this card's cooldown. We get to do more damage, etc. So try to save both of them for when we're playing scenario. It's either going to be in the second or third round when you do that. Battering Ram, I added it in here just for consistency and getting the units we need to activate scenario card. Play it on the range row and we're just getting to damage a unit by three with this. As I said, you could use winch to reset it if you like. Keep in mind with the battering rams in our deck, we need room to play like pretty much one whole row for fall test and the dun banners. So like if you're gonna play for some reason fall test, dun banner, defender, at the same time you're playing scenario, maybe that's just how the match ended up going, having those two kind of strategies together. Keep in mind that battering ram's gonna get a bit awkward because you know you won't be able to jump in and out of rows because fall test will pretty much clog one whole row of the dun banners. So we do have two lots of boiling oil, nice control, damage an enemy unit by five. A good tip that I'd share with you guys is when you're coming up against Saskia, it's an immunity unit, but as you know, um, its ability thins a unit right next to it. So if you are able to kill that unit with boiling oil, the death blow here allows you to purify adjacent units, meaning that basically you'd purify the Saskia and then you'd have complete access to it. So you could go one boiling oil unit next to Saskia, purify Saskia, then boiling oil her with a second um, card that we have. So just keep that little tip in mind because Saskia is pretty prevalent at the moment. Then we have Natalis here. We get to play a warfare card from our deck. You know, typically you're going to go for AA, but we've got a lot of different consistencies with Natalis. You could go boiling oil, you could go winch or bombardment. He's real flexible to play in this deck. Probably a first round card because it adds thinning, right? Thinning's always good early on. Um, keep in mind also, <clears throat> pardon me, Natalis can contribute to Raphael's Vengeance crew ability. So as I said, it's just dependent really where you're going to play this card, whether it's going to be melee or ranged row though. Then we have Seltkirk here. Order is melee, so it's a melee row locked unit. We get to jewel an enemy unit. One of our leader charges will be reserved for Seltkirk. And Seltkirk is a target you'd want to keep in mind for Varaxis. So you could use Varaxis to reset Seltkirk's order ability so he can jewel two times. Usually you'll find that Seltkirk's probably good in the first round if you want to shut a card down like Dunker or maybe a nice engine piece of your opponents just to stop them from getting ahead. And it just ensures you get round control better. We do have the Defender here. Defender is really just used to give protection to Fall Test and the Dun Banner units. That's it. Um, say if you go in the first round and you play Raphael's Vengeance, win the first round like that. Into the second round, you could push for a bleed by playing Defender. Then you play Fall Test next and the Dun Banners. And then you could find a good time to pass and could put a ton of pressure on your opponents. So just keep that in mind. Try to save Defender as much as possible for King Fall Test. Then we have Prince, it's another dueling unit here. If you play it on the melee row, it's gonna gain zeal and you can just damage a unit by four, that's pretty good. But if it's gonna be inspired, it's gonna work like Seltkirk. So, you know, you could go ahead and play it on the range row for that battle. And once again, these are just targets, optimal targets for, for access, right? You could reset Prince's order ability or Seltkirk's order ability. And you could consider saving Prince maybe for short round three with Varaxis and Siege or something like that. We have so many different plays here. Raphard's Vengeance. The first play that we're going to do is you put Raphard's Vengeance down on the board. You click one of our leader charges onto it. And then hopefully you have a bronze soldier unit in your hand and you just thin it down and you can go ahead and boost this card up or play it next to whatever the order ability is of that unit that you play. Just remember, Winch is really good with this. So this is a first round card for us. Provides a ton of thinning, meaning we're going to get the other cards that we want later on, all right? King Fall Test. Um, this is a card that we're just using specifically in this deck with the Dun Banner units. That's it. Because we've got the Devotion condition in this deck. So we get to also boost the Spawned Copy by one. 
So basically, as I said, what we're going to do is you play Defender, you play Foltest behind Defender, then you're going to play a Dunbanner unit next to Foltest. Whenever Dunbanner receives a boost, summon all copies of it from your deck to this row. So Foltest will be spawning extra copies of Dunbanners in our deck. And then the boosted Dunbanner thins out the extra copies. Those extra copies are four powered units. And keep in mind, Foltest is boosting by one. So that's five points per turn engine. Foltest becomes very, very strong. So yeah, it, basically it's a second or third round play. That strategy that we have. Then we've got Varaxis here. Um, obviously we're looking for the, the king ability or outcast at worst. I guess playing in either one of these stages doesn't really matter. They're quite the same really. Because we're only using it for the purpose of resetting the order ability of either Prince here or Seltkirk. So you may wish to consider playing Varaxis um, second or third round, really. That's it. Whenever it looks best for you to use it, if you believe it can put some very good pressure. As I said, or you could just use it for a short round three finisher. Amphibious Assault, just to give us access. Play an all in Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of nine or less. Um, so it could play for a lot of good value on a Carrick Marine. You can imagine the boost it gets from AA and then this unit itself does four boost for example or what you'll find is that sometimes you like to use AA to go ahead and ensure a reinforced ballista with siege that's how we're using it in this deck guys then the final card that we have is siege scenario card this is a card you're going to play in the second or third round when you open up um, initially you'll spawn this unit and then subsequently you spawn the following cards and get to play them so yep just make sure you have enough siege engines to trigger this and it can play for tons of value okay my friends so that is an overview of the cards in the deck now for a quick summary of the strategy round one you play Raphard's vengeance you click leader charge onto it and you want to play optimally these soldier units down here let's say hopefully we win the first round then we go into round two and what we'd like to do is put pressure with either the Foltest um, play that I suggested. Foltest behind Defender with the Dunbanners. You could even commit Prince with Varaxis at that time. Or if not, you'd go Siege, play your Siege units out, find a good time to pass. If not, go for the 2-0. But if you pass, like I said, depending on what strategy you went for, then you could go like Siege in a short round. For access etc depending on what's left over so this is the deck i hope you're going to enjoy it and best of luck with the new season i guess this is good to kill a tax collector off we pretty much need this hand everything we got i'd like to keep these cards winch is good too Opening play for us. We'll just go like this. Full test, nice. Very, very good. I could hold on the stratagem. Um, they do like to do poisons. Maybe stratagem can give protection to something they poison. I don't think they have like some direct control like heat waves or whatnot. Maybe we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. True. This is good for us. Looking good so far. Good points. Haven't even used stratagem yet. Very nice. Yeah, self-poison. It's to be expected. Karak Marine's going to give us a ton of points. It's really good to play into. Because we're Devotion, it's boosting by 4. Could hold that. 
it's just the, the following cards i wouldn't really want to play them out maybe just reinforce ballista because we're playing this deck in a specific way Next to subscribe at tier one for three months currently on a three month streak thanks very much dex really appreciate it man how are you you doing all right thanks for your support dude legend honestly uh, okay so they really want round control Maybe we kind of do as well. We'll play the Dun Banners out next. So they're going up by three with this, right? At the end of your turn, boost off by three, horde nine. Passes. Yeah, we had to commit a bit for this. So we do want our ballistas now. Okay. Guess we could keep it like this. Domination. I'll go on to reinforce Ballista. Interesting they played at range throw. Even though they know I have this. Nice kill for us. This does still stay alive, does it? Uh, it dies now, actually. Oh, that's really nice, actually. That's good. Very good push here. Yep, Fallen Rayla, okay. They continue to play range throw <laughs> into this. So how does this card work again? Whenever you pay a tribute... Uh, okay, I see. We just kill it off. That works too. Prince is pretty good at 7 power here for Varaxis if we want it. Hide out. We got three points of damage like this.
This kept playing into Trebuchet the whole match. It's a misplay for them, but they did it like three times in a row. Nice control. Great. We definitely don't want duplicates. Yeah, so we didn't get Raphard's Vengeance here. We may have to play a bit slow. But yeah, thank you so much for the host. That's awesome. Means a lot. Stay and watch KG, you heathens. <laughs> yeah. AA for Vengeance. Um, I don't think it can pull it, dude. Because... Raphael's Vengeance is a 10. Provision cost of 9 or less. Yeah, it's no longer no longer 9p. Yep, yep. Um, okay. Well, this does give him a lot of value, doesn't it? Could just go Selkirk here. Just get rid of it. Yeah, they changed it. They changed it up. Um, I believe it was to do with the meditating mages and just all the mage plays that happened. Maybe that affected those um, views on his provision cost. They thin nothing out with it? Why is that? Wait, so they don't have the condition to play Saskia in their deck? Wow, that's a bit unusual, isn't it? Um, well, it's a shame my hand's not solid here, you know? If my hand was solid, I could really put it on them. They don't think they have enough categories? Jeez. <laughs> That's why you're going to watch the deck guides. <laughs> you're really going to watch the deck guides before you play, man. Oh, jeez. Miscounted? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Kirill, are you from Russia originally? Uh, no, I'm Macedonian and Serbian, which is, you know, my name Kirill's from Macedonian origins, but I know Russians have Kirill as well, but it's with double L, I think, how they pronounce, um, or how they spell the name, I should say. But yeah, my background's Macedonian and Serbian, and born and raised here in Australia, though. Wow, that's, that's really bad for them, guys. What a waste. In saying that, I don't really have much to play with my hand. I wish I had Vengeance here. I'm just going to keep boosting Silk. <laughs> We're going to have one big Silk, guys. It would be nice to play this onto him first. That might be pretty crazy. Um, oh yeah, a nice tip to consider, guys, is... Um, you know how Saskia thins out units next to it? Like, a real nice thing is using boiling oil because it purifies this. Just like this. So then you got, like, direct access to this card. Works really good. Not that it matters here, really. I wonder if it's worth playing Varaxis here in the first. I mean, it's not its optimal form, but depends how they play on. Harvest. Simlas works really nice in these kinds of decks, doesn't he? Yeah, they could take it. So we're hoping to draw Raphard's Vengeance and Foltest would be good. I'm using um, Foltest with Dunbanner in this deck. It's a Devotion deck, so Dunbanner thins out really good with a good boost to it as well. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, we've got some good draws here. AA could get us another Ballista. But I'm probably going to click around a bit because we just want to find Raphael's Vengeance. Didn't get it. Spit it out 
Bombardment seems to work good here, so just get rid of that. So they're playing into this. So then you gotta think, what do you wanna commit here? Like, am I going scenario now? If I go scenario, they're likely to pass, aren't they? We don't really want this here. So let's just kill it off. I mean, Vraxis, we could go Vraxis here even onto this. It's just playing for four points of damage. Discord link. Um, you could search Discord in the chat and it'll come up. Just go exclamation point Discord and it pops up. Uh, so I've got one leader charge here. One leader charge is for vengeance. One's reserved here. Don't really want this alive. Hmm. One day I'll return, but you will not live to greet me. Yeah, I'll probably put later on to that. Hey, side dive, what's up? Uh yeah, if you guys want to link to my Discord. Where is it at? There it is. You're welcome to join. We share a lot of deck building advice there. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of high level players, content creators. So yeah, it's a nice place, pretty friendly, no egos. Not much, just chilling, work was stressful. Oh, really, what happened at work? Why stressful, man? Yeah, I think I'm going Defender. I'll put Defender here because I don't want to clog the row now that we're doing this. They could pass and they're okay because they won the first. We go Foltus next, then done better. Yep, they don't know what's coming guys, I'm telling you. These done banners are deadly. A lot of points fast. Had a fixed TV issue. <laughs> Hung over your shoulder the entire time. Oh, that's awkward, dude. Had a time limit and nothing worked. Oh my goodness, sounds rough. I hope this match could cheer you up anyway. <laughs> Sorry to hear of your day. Oh yeah, let's get ahead now. Oh, that's good, that's good. Nice. Just gonna quit, it's freelance. Ah, oh, I see. WTF is opponent playing. Well, yeah, as you guys saw, man, um, they played Saskia, but I don't think they read the card's text, but maybe they made a mistake in their deck. I don't know, but um, they can't play it the way they intended to. So what do we go on AA for here? I think I'm just playing this for Zeal. If the king demands ahead, I'll give him yours. Looks good. I think we're card advantage, right? Yeah, I think it's nice. Good, good. Siege for a short round should be very good for us guys. Should do really well. So you see, Foltest with Dunbanner's Devotion is really good because you're getting the boosted units pulled out as well. Got Raphard's Vengeance too. Oh man, this is good. This is really good. Yeah, Natalis could kill something off with Boiling Oil perhaps. Um, so what do we got left in here?
I mean, it's okay. It's not. It's not so bad, is it? Let's just get straight into it. Gordy's last play. Yeah, it could be. It would make sense in this kind of a deck. They've played a lot of specials. Rebuke. Sure. Um. So if I play this, this activates that. And then we're kind of wasting bombardment damage, aren't we? I want there to be targets, you know, before I go bombardment, really. Ah, oh, easy. Yes. Mm. We got it. We got it, my friends. Didn't have to lose that many points. Because they were playing into our range draw lock card. This is kind of better for later. We can always come back to it. We don't have much soldiers to thin from our hand except this. I mean, this could thin the Ballista out too. Play a bronze unit. But yeah, soldiers are more optimal. Obviously, it works with the crew ability better. So it's a Nilfgaard deck here. Tactical decision. Could it be mill? Hyper thin. I have to have a look. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity. That's a good pull that we got. Eric Marine's nice. Play the soldiers in the first round with this deck. They just to synergize with uh, Raphael's Vengeance more than anything else. AA is good because it could get us another Carrick Marine if we want. Winch is nice here. Dead Man's Tongue. This would be a good hit with Vengeance, if we could get onto it. Uh, make a AA first. Because that Carrick Marine in hand, I could thin with Vengeance. It's probably better that way, right? Already up on points. They have Sunset Wanderers. It's wandering back there. It's making me wonder things. Ooh, Lockle's good for them here. Yeah, we don't have Purifiers in this deck. It's not really any point of playing next to it now. It's not going to activate it. We could just keep playing in still. We are still up on points. It's good. Passing? They're passing on seven cards? Man, I'll take it. I'll take it, man. Let's just go for a big push here. I just want Foltest. 
Fall test will be beautiful. We can let Natalis get us a, a siege. Okay. Maybe we play siege here. We got some good short round cards. Foltest, Firaxis, Silkirk, Dunbanner, Defender. So. I might just get straight into it like this. We've got the luxury of passing uh when we want and we're safe because we want on even the first i think we should just really try to squeeze some good cards out of them here not sure why they passed that early on But I want to try to get leader out of them for sure. Yep, took vengeance. Okay, let's do it. Let the points come on. No drops out now of leader. Listen to me sing, yep. Not all battles need end in bloodshed. Good. Let's just keep getting good things out. We probably end up damaging something there. Yep. They didn't really thin properly there, did they? Yeah, sure. Let's go Natalis. Dark clouds gather over Tamera. Into Reinforce Ballista, I think it's good. Yep. Almost killed this. He missed one card playing a leader on eight. Yep. Raphard's vengeance in the form of a reinforced ballista for some reason. Anyway, let's kill this off. Uh, good. I mean, we could just boiling oil that even. Ah, uh, this is great, guys. It's looking good for us. Yep, yep. Nice. So, Wanderers is third card now. And we still got Prince here. We could go Prince, because we got Saltkirk later. Hoping that we get to it. Illusionist. They really want this alive, hey? Could damage it by one here? Nah, I think I'm just... Yeah, I'll do this. Let's just do that. Let's 
So we could go winch onto this. That gives us some nice points because, you know, we're triggering these as well. No good wine will come from here, not even compost. Okay, that fell into this pretty good for us. Beautiful. Good points. Very good. So Wanderers comes out now. Now you just got to think, when would you want to pass, really? How much catch it, Master? Sees me every time. Yep. Well, we're still up on points, and we can still generate some decent damage. I still keep playing into it at this point. Yep. Come on now. Let's do it. Very nice. Up by 14 points. I'm killing that next. That Witcher. Truffle. They're probably going to try to boost this up with the Kerak. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I could take card advantage here. Maybe it's worth it. Could play into it too. You gotta kind of consider those things, eh? Like, timing is really important in Gwent. But I feel it's looking pretty good for us. Maybe we get some good card out of them here on the end. Maybe it's good for them to waste location. Perhaps they think I'm going to play on because I didn't use the order here. Light, yeah. <laughs> this is a nice pass, eh? Because it puts us on even points. Ah, oh, this is great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I like it. Oh, uh, that, that worked out good. So they kind of misplayed by playing that there, didn't they? Because they chose to play that ranged. Okay. Well, it works for us. Yeah, I reckon, eh? Man, that, that was nice for us, I'm telling you. I, I was just thinking, you know, should I play that last Ballista or not? But see, it worked out, like I said, and we got Lydia out. Ah, uh, there we go. We got our package. We just need Silkirk. I mean, if anything, this is like a seven point unit we could play. Okay, it could work with that too. That's not all so bad. There's a lot of points, full tests with done banners. Like I said, we're devotion. So there's tons. Uh, okay, okay. Fall over, 
Lord, and I'm not jumping in after you. Yeah, we got it. GG, my friends. Yes, yes. It's not a good hand, my friends. Hey, Forrest, what's up, my friend? Welcome, how are you? How's things? Thanks for all your constant support to my channel. Absolute legend. So yeah, I just kind of played the soldiers out when we're in these cases. I mean, we want Raphard's vengeance, but we didn't get it. The rest of the hand's not that good either. Accept our sacrifice. I'll let them take it. Good thing is that we've got Foltest, Defender, and one. Oh, we've got two Dun Banners, but we've got that combo here. So we're good. We're good in that sense. But that new Sarais card, I haven't like, is that a successful card to play really? Because I heard a lot of different feedback on it. It seems it's hard to control when you thin it out, right? That may be the biggest challenge with it. I didn't get into it myself much. Melu scene here. Okay. Sure, why not? It's good to get that out of the way. Most likely, summon it back. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like, so they already thinned it out. Is that intentional for them? Or do they try to save that? So Going down cards? Okay, so they want a long round against me. They're probably focusing on giving Melusine a bigger base power, isn't it? Do some thinning as well. Okay. Let's put one of these back. Yes. This is what I wanted to see. We need a dry pass card. I, I guess it's going to be Ballista. Got to do what we got to do. Better to keep it, but we have to throw something here. Okay. Interesting, my friends. I think this kind of plays better for us though, because going first with Siege, it's nice.
AA could pull us this. Battering ram. So we'll save one row for um, Siege and we'll save the other for Fault Test with the done better play we got coming up. It's pretty interesting. Salt cook for that, or I'm sure they've got another priest. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good counter to bombardment, isn't it? These skulls. Anyway, they they activated themselves. Bit hard to work around that. Probably goes a priest now here. Blue boy. Wow. Going hard. So this is the tallest unit. Is there a way I could work around this? It's going to be a lot of damage coming our way. It's a very good counter to us. We'll kill that off. Let's do that. Uh, crazy Disco Fish, if you'd like the deck, uh, I'm going to be releasing a deck guide on my YouTube channel for it, so... You know, if you haven't subscribed already and you'd like to, you can consider doing that or just keep an eye out for it there. But yeah, it will be my next deck guide and I'm still going to release it even though it's before the new season. You can just adjust to whatever changes come out. Yeah, you're welcome, no worries. So we could go Vengeance here and then go into Dun Banner and Fault Test. We actually avoided damaging Lugos, believe it or not. This is almost down. 
Well, that ends up triggering this. Anyway. Let's do this. Oh, we got Prince. Nice. Uh, we play it here? Yeah, I mean, they trigger the healing there. Emuel, what's up, Kechi? Hope you have a good holiday. I haven't been able to tune in for a while. Well, it's nice to see you again. And yeah, all has been good. And I wish you well as well. And good to see you on my stream again, buddy. Coral here. They're leaving it? Why would they leave Coral there? I'm just going to kill it off. Or should we kill Melusine? <laughs> uh... I don't know, I'm just going to kill this. <laughs> could be, could be an error. We'll see. I just don't know why they're waiting on that. But anyway. Yeah, we get Foltest next and we got Fraxis last. It could be worth killing that now, couldn't it? What if I destroy this now so they can't thin out the rest? Maybe we want to get more points though here. Two, four, six, seven, eight. We get one more. Olaf. Ah, oh, so they got Heim last, is it? We're just going to kill that off. I think it's best. Nice. Okay, so it's good that I didn't use Varaxis there. Nice, nice. Hey, nice win, guys. We got that. Very, very good.